Yes, of course, yeah. Well, in that case, I will say welcome, Nick, the developer of From the Depth. Hello, nice to be here. So uh, I think a lot of people that are watching this video uh, don't know uh, much, maybe, uh, about me. So I'll just say that I played uh, From the Depth uh, Alpha a little bit since 2015 and I've never re re really gone really deep. I mean, I think I'm almost under 100 hours in the game, but I've kept my eye on it because it has looked very interesting for a long time, but um, you know, Alpha games, they change, so stuff you build, they stop working, so that's, I've been taking it a little bit cool to see when it's closer to release, which is uh, closer to release now, which is nice to hear. Yeah, so I do a lot of other creative games, so that's why I'm quite interested. And uh, I can begin with asking for anyone that might not know, what is From the Depth? Um. So it's like an engineering sandbox where you build your own vehicles out of different component parts. So there's over a thousand different component parts now. Mm -hmm. um, and you can build vehicles up to maybe 50, 60, 70,000 different blocks. Uh, that could be anything from submarines to spacecraft or tanks or aircraft carriers, planes, anything you like. Um, and then there's like a global domination aspect to it where you have to take over the planet using the fleets that you've designed yourself um, and there's eight different factions on the planet and they all have maybe 200 300 different vehicles for each faction and you have to kind of conquer the planet defeating those eight factions and take over the world so there's quite a lot to it yeah that, that's a, that's a very uh, like interesting should we say uh, setup it's definitely it's like risk uh, the strategy game and yeah yeah and yeah. Uh, <clears throat> a sandbox builder in that too. Yeah, well, that was the that was the idea to have the sandbox element where you can spend yeah. thousands of hours designing and tweaking things, but then to give the player something to do with those designs. So there's the campaign, uh, there's a thing called adventure mode, there's mm -hmm. multiplayer to it, mm -hmm. and there's um, missions as well, like uh, scenario missions where you have to complete certain scenarios using vehicles you built yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've always sucked very much at the campaign so far. I, I don't think I'm <laughs> real at that real level of yeah. engineering that I'm, I'm better than the mm. Deep Water Guard, which is the easiest <laughs> faction, I think. They are, yeah, the first one, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they've recently started using rockets, which are quite deadly. So Oh, yeah. They are a bit, a bit more deadly than they used to be. Lucky me, the cram cannons have been buffed a bit. <laughs> <laughs> at least I know how to make them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so uh, we might already have touched a little bit on, on this, but what would you say makes From the Depth special compared to other sandbox games? Um, so there's a lot of building games where you maybe place a machine gun down and you know how the machine gun's going to work. But in From the Depths, you every system is split into different component parts. So you've got like the firing chamber and then maybe 10 or 15 different types of barrel you can place on that gun out to different lengths. And then you have different connecting parts, different auto loaders, different magazines, um, different recoil absorbers, different things for increasing the caliber of the weapon. And then even the shells themselves can be customized. So rather than just firing a high explosive shell, for example, you can put high explosive anti-tank warheads in there. You can put different caps on the end of the shell. You can add EMP or fragmentation or explosive warheads to it. You can add all uh, various other things that will speed it up or make it skim over water or uh, adjust for gravity or add tracers, that sort of thing, to the shell. So there's like an infinite number of shells that you can oh, yeah. fire from an infinite number of cannons. So the yeah, the level of complexity is just a lot greater than most other games, I think. And they, um, I think the amount of single player content is also Mm. higher than the other games in the genre. Yeah, I would agree. It's uh, definitely one of the more complex uh, in engineering aspect. You can customize a lot. And yeah. um, the, the learning curve is quite steep, but it's also quite rewarding when you finally make your ship able to maneuver. Yeah, yeah I think that's the biggest flaw for some people is the learning curve. But I think for other people, it's the biggest attraction because 
they can play for a thousand hours and still come back to it and learn new things. Um, mm. So it keeps it interesting, keeps it rewarding. Um, yeah. And we are we are working on the tutorials. So the, the tutorial system has been revamped for launch, and we're still putting some finishing touches on that. But it does take you through a lot a lot of the simple stuff now. Yeah, yeah. So like um, about that too. It's like who would you recommend from the death too, if you would like? <laughs> I think. Most of our players maybe started on some of the other building games, maybe started with Minecraft, then they enjoyed Space Engineers or uh, TerraTech or games like that. And then they, they're just looking for something with a bit more complexity and a bit more scale. Mm -hmm. um, and I think From the Depths offers a very large scale with a, a huge amount of complexity. And so people who have, who have got bored of the other building games tend to gravitate towards from the depths and then and then mm. stick with it because it's the uh, pinnacle of complexity so. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, it, it is quite complex indeed <laughs> yeah so like um, we also have this little like question from from Korva from um, reddit mm -hmm. and Korvra wonders like I also wonder like why did you choose like naval? It's like it's mostly sea. I mean there are starting yeah. to come a bit land and land combat too, but mainly you're building ships. Yeah, um, that is a good question. I I did a bit of sailing when I was younger, so mm. always been interested in boats, and I think the the kind of drag and the buoyancy factors were quite interesting to me as a physicist. So coding them up. It's quite interesting oh. and I think when the game first was envisaged it was going to be about traveling between different islands and having to build boats and rafts to get between different islands mm -hmm. and then it just the way it was developed basically the islands became less important and the boats became more important and uh, everyone wants guns so yeah <laughs> and also, also there was you know, there were some early concepts for fighting sea monsters and things like that so it was just the way yeah, definitely. Way it started out really, but um, it's also it's a lot easier to do boats than land vehicles because um, the ocean is flat, so pathfinding is quite easy, and shooting from boat to boat is a lot easier than to, you know shooting from tank to tank because there could be hills in the way and things. So just um, it makes the game a little bit easier to to code up if if it's all ocean. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah. And the ocean plays nicely with the aircraft as well, so... Um. It makes it easier. So, like, about what uh, Corvi also wonders, it's like a, it's like a batch of small sub-questions. I'll select a few of them. Yeah. Okay. And so, about, like, from the depth, um, the name, wh where did... <laughs> wh wh why? <laughs> Again, it was, like, seven years ago, the game was going to be about hunting mm. sea monsters. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and when really the game get... was when the game first released, um, there were actually sea monsters in it and dragons, um, hmm. but they were they they were never they they broke when the game was changed when it changed from Unity script to C sharp. And okay. I never fixed them, and nobody want, wanted them back really because they were pointless, and everybody wanted to just build vehicles and fight vehicles. Vehicles, yeah. So, um, yeah, they never got added back, and the name the name never got changed. But I, I story, like immediately so. think like Call of Cthulhu when I hear from the death. Yeah. it's a really bad name. <laughs> oh well. Um, yeah. well. So there you go. A little bit random, but you know, will the will the sea sea monsters ever come back, or will they only um, be? I don't think so. No. I would quite like eventually to maybe add organic parts to the vehicles, mm. but that's just a pipe dream. Yeah, I think we'll, it'd be quite we'll fun see. to be able to add like wings or tails or claws or something like that, mm. so that you can make a like half mechanical, half living creature. All but right. No, no plans for that at the moment. So, no. We shall see then, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, well, um, ab about the game, um, the uh, release date was um, prolonged a little bit. So, yep. uh, what is the new like release date uh, for from the seventh of November? Seventh of November, we should expect yep. a, 
uh, yeah. official release of From the Death. Yes. Okay. So, like, um, at the release date, you know, uh, how would you say, how finished will the game be at that point? Will, you know, any more features be added or will it just be some bug fixes or...? So, what we're doing for the 7th of November is changing the way the campaign works to make the, the AI that controls the factions more intelligent and more interesting and to make the campaign less repetitive. Um, that's the main change and then as well as that we're working on the tutorials to make it easier for new players we're tidying up the user interface because a lot of a lot of that has been migrated to a new system and a lot of it still hasn't so we're moving the old stuff over hmm. um, and responding to a lot of feedback about the user interface and we're fixing a lot of bugs so those are the three main or four main things that we're doing um, for the release but that doesn't mean we're going to stop development at the release. We're going to continue to develop the game for hopefully many more years. As, mm. as you know, for as long as the revenue from the game is is good, we'll continue to work on it. Yeah. So, uh, would you then say that new features will probably be added after release, or? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. Interesting. Um, so, in that case, I'll I'll wonder a little bit about. Um, uh, when when developing the game, mm -hmm. what was like, what has been the hardest like parts to mm. overcome? That's a good question. I think multi-threading it was quite difficult because Unity doesn't naturally play very well with multiple threads, so that took a long time. Uh, which is that's something we just achieved this year, really. Um, but was it C Sharp or Unity now? It's it's Unity, but the lang the the language that okay. Unity runs is C Sharp. Um, so that's been difficult. I think the rest of the game has it's just been a massive amount of time to put it together, but mm. nothing nothing too difficult, really. Um, Balancing it is, is is practically impossible, and the multiplayer has been very difficult as well. But yeah, uh, those are things that we're working on as well. Okay, now so I just uh, you know wonder like because uh, have you made any games before from the depth or is it your like first? No, this is the first one. So yeah, it's been a massive learning curve. I can't imagine. You, you had a background in physics or you mentioned something? Yeah, um, I did a physics degree and then I've worked as an engineer for 10 years now. Wow. In the aerospace and, dis and defense sector. So. Well, that's cool. That's, 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 one, that's one of the cool jobs. <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> wow. I've worked on some really interesting stuff. So. I can imagine. Oh, um, well, well, that's interesting. It's a very, like, very sharp, like, changing of, uh, changing of, like, business to to do like engineering and then just, yeah, I'll yeah. do engineering, but in <laughs> like in imaginary universe. Yeah, it's much easier. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, engineering and from the depths, a lot easier than real life. Oh yeah, man! Mm. Like building a building a small boat would take <laughs> two years. In from the depths, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, well, uh, shall I? Uh, we move on to some like technical questions about Please, game yeah. mechanic because uh, you know I have I wouldn't say I'm good at the game, but I have some experience. It's at least a few uh, cycles I've been playtime, so <laughs> I know the basics, but. Um, uh, one thing I've noticed is that, um, I don't know if I can bring this up, you know, I can't. Uh, I have a Swedish keyboard. Um, will, right. will keybinds be a thing, like custom? Uh, they, they actually are a thing. Oh. Yeah. If, you go, if you go into the options menu, um, every single key is bindable. Okay, uh, you'll good. find probably 90 or 100 different keys in there that you can rebind. So it's actually it used to be on the launcher of the game but now it's inside the game's option menu itself and it's it's all all rebindable um, and you can rebind it to with shift control or alt as modifiers for the for the key as well so 
Oh, well, that's that's oh. great. That's great. All the mod cons, yeah. Yeah, I, I've noticed yep. with a new uh, user interface update, it's a lot better, but I haven't explored all the tabs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nice. Well, that's cool. Um, so uh, one thing I also wonder, like in the game, is uh, you're fighting enemy AI ships. Yeah, you know, like you, yep. you build this AI system, like this computer that uh, arranges everything and detects and uh, targets mm -hmm. and everything like that. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, of course, uh, you have your own character, and you can use your character to control uh, one vessel. Um, yeah. And I wonder if like the enemy factions if if there will be like real real enemies or if it will continue to like have ai enemy only um so there was a point in the past where we did have npcs that could roam around the vehicle and shoot you and they could also drive the vehicles hmm. that was removed a couple of years ago and i don't i don't see that feature coming back um we are working on a second game called Forgotten Shores where there there's no AI blocks but there are so you know there are humans that roam around on the vehicles and control everything so they reload the guns they aim the guns they shoot the guns they uh pilot the steering wheel you know they they drive the boat they uh control the sails they control everything okay you know, like if you need a you know, a hydrofoil to be moved or something like that, they'll go and control the hydrofoil um, and change the angle on it. Um, you know, like re-putting coal into the engine, um, yeah. that sort of thing. So they do everything. So that's, like, definitely a step for a future game. Um, but for From the Depths, I don't think there will ever be enemy avatars running around on the ships. All right. Um, yeah. And it's, it's mainly just because... Um, just to keep things vaguely focused, because From the Depths is already a massive game, and adding in something like that would just just make it too big, I think, too unwieldy, and make make it too hard to test and keep it relatively bug-free. It becomes more difficult as we pile on the complexity. So, yeah, yeah I've kept that for yeah, yeah. kept that for another project. Yeah, well, I do, uh, since the uh, player uses mostly AI ships, it's <clears throat> natural that yeah. the enemy also has AI ships. Uh, yeah. I guess the only thing one could have is probably like a leader or something, like a mastermind to assassinate. To... <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. Um, that might be where like the kind of organic vehicles came in, where you mm. could have the Scarlet Dawn being run by some alien tentacle well, monster that... thing. Alien tentacles. That has to be defeated, but Would, yeah. yeah. Wouldn't say no to alien tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned like the update that's coming up. Um, you'll change the campaign quite uh, a bit. Like, yep. how mm -hmm. much will it change? I tested a campaign like last year. I played a bit yep. in it, but. So it, it used to be based on a system where there were grid squares, and as you went into a grid square, enemies would spawn and you would fight them and then you would move on to the next grid square and gradually conquer the map mm. doing that there were some more you know there's some more finer points on it like enemy hqs that produce fleets that will go and attack you or reinforce the grid sections and stuff like that and um, the new system basically gets rid of the grid squares and has the hq building all of the fleets and those it will build like resource harvesting vehicles and supply vehicles and it will go and mine resource and use the supply vehicles to transport that material back to the HQ to build more fleets. And the fleets are all using a far more intelligent in artificial intelligence system to figure out what to do and where to attack and how to move and uh, you know, kind of planning their operations. So it should it should be a lot more lively and engaging i think after this change and a okay. lot less repetitive um and then hopefully we can do the same kind of thing with the faction diplomacy eventually as well so that you the enemies declare war on you in response to your actions mm. uh, maybe, maybe gang up on you and we're adding um various other things which will allow battles between multiple factions at once so it won't just mm. be you versus the Deepwater Guard, you'll be able to bring in your allies and they'll be able to bring in their allies oh. and lead to some sort of more interesting battles between 
lots of enemies of different yeah. uh, technological levels. Well, that could be really interesting to kind of have some yeah. some of that aspects too. Yeah. Sorry, my computer keeps going to sleep if I don't move the mouse. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Well, could you keep it awake then? Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, um, one thing I really wonder when building is, will there be an undo button? That's funny you should ask that, actually, because one of our team members just um, posted an example of doing that. He, he'd actually coded that into one of the branches of the game. So that's something that might be coming out um, quite shortly. But I, I need to... I've been on holiday for the last week and I need to catch up with him and see where he got to on that. But yeah, he's really keen to put in the undo, yeah. undo, redo. I'm um, also very keen that he puts in the undo yeah. button. <laughs> yeah, me too, yeah. So oh. that would be great. So um, hopefully we'll be hearing a bit more about that shortly, yeah. Yeah, it will be great for me. I make mistakes <laughs> and sometimes the mistakes are fatal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So like kind of about... Uh, recent thing is that like w will there be easier copy paste function because now you need to capture an area and then kind of save it and then like load it and paste it there. so I don't know if you've played recently but we recently up updated the prefab system oh. um, so now you can kind of copy it move it and paste it without needing to save it to file oh. so it's a lot easier to use it yeah you can kind of copy it Move it where you want it, and then paste it down, and then you can clear your selection, re make another selection of the same size, and move it mm -hmm. and paste it um, without needing to, yeah, to save lots of different prefabs to your to your hard drive. So mm -hmm. I think you'll find it's a lot easier now. Yeah. Oh, well, that that sounds great. So yeah. I, I just thought about like um, another thing too. When I, I just heard that from from asking around on, on Reddit, there was a function that someone asked for, and it apparently there you can actually control C and control V sub entities. You can you can copy and paste any block. Yeah. Um, okay. So if you have like a shield projector and you place five of them and you configure one of them, you can control C to copy the settings of the shield projector and then you can control V to paste those settings into any other shield projector. Okay, cool. So that, that will save you a lot of time as well. So you can use that for setting up thrusters or hmm. shields or uh, guns or whatever. So okay. yeah, and, and you, in, in build mode, control, control C and control V, they, they copy paste every single block. So yeah, quite useful. Well, that's useful indeed. Mm -hmm. And so, like, in from the depth, uh, we can have, like, different uh, sub-entities. We can have turrets and spin blocks and stuff like that. Uh, and to jump between them, uh, you kind of want need to look at it and, like, click a specific button to, like, switch to that entity. Yeah, um, so, so are you using mouse-based yeah. milding? Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, sometimes. Right. But I think so you in need mouse, to act, yeah. yeah, in keyboard, you... Traditionally, you've had to press the bracket button to yeah. uh, to cycle between them, and in mouse space, it's a little bit easier because you can just look at it and press the bracket button, and it will move on to that vehicle. But actually, if you press the middle mouse button down, it brings up an extended list of options, and in that extended list of options, you'll find a list of all your turrets and spinners, and you can click those buttons, and it will start building directly on those turrets and spinners. And for the next patch, we're going to add a system where in that view, when, when the extended options are shown, you'll be able to just click directly on the root of the turret or spinner to start building on it. So that will make it a lot easier. So there's a lot of functions that you can access by pressing the middle mouse button. Oh, yeah. That uh, speed things up a lot. Yeah. Yeah, f funny, funny you said that because I was almost about to suggest adding a uh, middle mouse button switch to entities because another game I play had this function and it's very handy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, this, I mean, this, this middle mouse button in, in every view, it brings up loads of new, loads of new options, which are quite handy. And mm -hmm. it gives you control of your mouse. So you can click on things on the screen and interrogate all the data and uh, use these extra options. So we've put quite a lot of new features in there. Yeah. Things like you can place a mirror, place a central mirror from there easily, which is quite useful. So you don't have to go to the center of your vehicle to place a mirror. Mm. You can just click a button. Uh, you can do the prefab stuff from in there. 
um, change the colors you're painting with from in there uh, and change the different views as well so you no longer have to cycle through all the views to get the view you want you can just uh, click it so well that's great um, so and, uh, to be honest I haven't played around a lot with wheels and not at all with legs but uh, before when I played uh, the spin blocks and heli blades uh, and yep. also wheels and legs of course um, I think didn't require like engine power mm. do they now or and will they um, probably not because I, I you can add engine power to them to increase their effect mm. but I quite like um, making simple vehicles that don't require an engine personally so I quite I quite like keeping that functionality because you can make sort of stealth planes that have no heat signature and require no fuel and I think they're quite cool, so <laughs> okay. I'm not going to break that for myself. Um, wheels do require energy, uh, okay. power, yeah. and um, the feet, the walker feet for walkers, they just work on spin blocks, so there is currently no benefit to adding power to those. Okay, so, so uh, yeah. like, mm. mix will be the energy efficient alternative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which well, I, I, I find that fine, because they're they're quite fun to build and they're quite complex and they require quite a lot of skill so there should be some advantage to to using them oh yeah and the heli blades and like spin blocks in general of course but heli blades too they're kind of just this chunk you can place to make yeah it lift. heli heli blade blades um i would consider adding power to them i think but then then that would just encourage the use of spin blocks Oh yeah, that's uh, true. with helicopter blades on them, which lag more. Which yeah. lag, so that would defeat the purpose of them. So there is a reason for all of these choices, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I think, I see. Again, you know, I think I think the jet engines are more powerful than the the heli blades and take up mm. less space. So them requiring a bit of fuel is, or a bit of power, is fair enough. You already touched a little bit on this, but uh, Mr. Gibbles from Reddit kind of wonders that if walkers will be easier to make sometime soonish, so that are a more viable option, uh, he says. Um, so we are planning one change, which is that in the spin block you have control over the rate or speed, and you have control over the angle. And for most walkers, I think people are using the angle control. And the spin block changes the angle at a pretty slow speed when you change the angle itself. So we're going to add an option where you can use the the current rate setting of the spin block to change the angle, which would mean you could have angle control for a spin block that have the, the walker foot moving a lot faster. So, or have the walker foot moving at whatever speed you want because you'll have control over it. Oh yeah, that sounds quite complex, but I think I understand what you mean. Change yeah, it. so yeah, so you could have it moving from like 40 degrees to 90 degrees, but typically it will usually do that at some particular speed, which is hard coded into the game and quite slow. Mm. But the, the change would be to allow it to, to make that change. At whatever speed the speed the rate controller is currently set to, um, so that would speed them up. In terms of making them easier, well, I mean they're already, I think, quite easy because you can have they they've got variable friction, so they only apply the friction when you want them to, and in the okay. direction you want them to apply the friction, which uh, is quite a useful simplification to them and allows them to be controlled by the AI um, or the player. Or ACBs or whatever, so that's already quite simple. So, um, Qu quite yeah, simple. Well, yeah. uh, quite with simple, your engineering yeah. background, it, it may be quite <laughs> yeah. simple indeed. I mean, I've, I've <laughs> never made one, but it looks quite simple to me. Um, but yeah, there yeah. are some people who are very, very good at it. Um, asking for advice from them would be the best yeah. way forward, I think, because some people have built some really, really cool ones. Yeah, definitely. You've seen some like amazing builds out there. Just like wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they would be less cool if it was easier to do as well. So. Well, that's a point. Got to factor that in. That's a point.
well you definitely see some really impressive builds from the depth I, I've seen I think you made a, a game that can uh, allow players to make some their their grandest wettest battleship dreams come true <laughs> yeah 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 that's the thing any more questions I think that uh, these these are the questions so uh, right. okay yeah I don't know uh, I, I don't think maybe if you want to ask me something do but otherwise <laughs> <laughs> well are you are you getting back into the game now then and, and having another shot at it oh. yeah I, pl I plan to uh, get back into the the game um, I think I'll prepare a little bit for like the actual release because I want to like get into it for real with a release uh, yeah so that stuff I build will kind of ish stay yeah. the same yeah so Great. until well. then I'll, I'll try to understand um, how to build a little bit better with, with the update that, that has been since I played last and um, I also yeah. intend to make some tutorials about the games as, as I learn it because I usually like mm. to do tutorials in the creative games I do play yeah brilliant yeah all oh, right. Well, that sounds great. Wow. Well, thanks a lot for participating in this little interview. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure, and uh, hope you enjoy the game and the and the new patches that come with the launch. And uh, well, hopefully, we speak will. to you shortly. I same to you. We'll await the uh, yeah. release with high spirits. <laughs> thanks. Okay. Bye for All now. Right. Thanks.